Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV, and welcome back to my Linux Essentials series, the series where I teach you guys the basics of a command, a service, or a function of Linux so that you can get up to speed with it quickly. In this particular video, I am going to go over the apt commands, which are the commands that you will use to install new packages on Debian, Ubuntu, and distributions that are based on Debian and Ubuntu. It's a great application, it's very easy to learn, and I can't wait to get into it. But before I do, I want to take a moment to mention the sponsor for today's video, Linode. Linode has been doing cloud computing since 2003, which is actually before Amazon Web Services was even a thing. On Linode's platform, you can get your server up and running in minutes, and they include all of the popular distributions, such as CentOS, Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, and get this, also Arch Linux. And let's be honest, what could be better than a Linux cloud server provider that allows you to tell all of your friends, I run Arch? Linode has multiple server plans available to make any app scalable and flexible. You can use it to host a blog, set up a VPN server, a Minecraft server, or you could do what I did and set up a website for your YouTube channel because the official website for Learn Linux TV runs on Linode. And Linode offers 24 by 7, 365 support regardless of plan size, so you can get live help from a real person when you need it. New users can get started right now with $100 in credit towards a new account. And I highly recommend you check them out because Linode is awesome. So thank you to Linode for your continued support of Learn Linux TV. I really appreciate it. So now let's go ahead and get into apt and learn how to use it. All right, so let's get right into it. Now here I am on my laptop. I've connected to a Debian Linode instance. And why did I choose Debian, you might ask? Well, when it comes to apt, Debian is where it all started. So to use any other distribution when I'm going over apt commands, it just didn't seem right. Now, the commands that I'm going to show you in this video don't just work on Debian, because Ubuntu, Linux Mint, and a number of others all use the apt series of commands as well. So once you master the apt command, then those skills will serve you well even on other distributions. Now first of all, anytime we are using the apt package manager, we need to refresh it and make sure that it's up to date. And we can do that by running apt update, just like that. And despite the verbiage, you might think that this command will actually install software updates, but that's not what this does. Now, first of all, it's not going to work because I don't have permission to use apt. And it might be obvious to some, but just in case you didn't already know, you will need sudo or root privileges to interact with the apt commands. So what I'll do is run sudo, and then apt, and then update, and that should work. Now, if you are logged in as root, then it probably already worked. I'll press enter. And as you can see, the command worked. But what exactly did this do? So as you can see, it connected to various URLs here to download a list of available packages. Periodically, new packages are introduced to Debian and Ubuntu repositories all the time. So anytime you run this command, it just basically refreshes its index. So that way it knows what all packages are available and at what versions. It's just overall a really good idea to run this when you start using the apt commands for the day or when you install a new repository. Now, installing a package with apt is very easy to do. And for this example, one package that I want to install is tmux. tmux is awesome. In fact, I have an entire series about tmux if you want to learn how to use it. But if I enter the tmux command, nothing happens because, well, it's not installed. So to fix that, I can install the tmux package by running sudo apt install, and then the name of the package that I want to install, in this case, tmux. I'll press enter. And hold on a minute. I only asked for tmux, which is listed right here, so why is it installing this package and this package as well? I only asked for this one. And here the verbiage is saying that the following additional packages will be installed, and that's pertaining to packages that are required for tmux, 
Often, a package will have one or more dependencies that are required, and the apt command is smart enough to figure that out for you, so if you request a package that requires other packages in order for it to work, then it's going to install those as well. And here it's asking me, do you want to continue? We have an option that's a capital Y, and then we have a lowercase n. It's probably obvious, but Y refers to yes and N refers to no. So that means I can press Y and then enter to confirm that I do want to do this. But if I don't actually type anything and press enter, it's going to confirm it because the Y was in caps. The capital option is the default if you don't choose anything else. So now I'll enter the tmux command and tmux is working. And if this doesn't make sense to you what tmux is, again, I have a whole series about it, so don't worry about it. But tmux is a very awesome application. I highly recommend you check it out. But anyway, I'll go ahead and exit tmux. And now I'm back to my normal command prompt. Now another thing that you can do with apt is you can install multiple packages all in one shot. So earlier I ran this command. I'll just press the up arrow to recall that. And there it is. There's the command that we ran. I could actually press space and then include another application at the end and another one and so on, just like that. So I don't actually have to run the apt command three times to install three different packages. I could just chain them together just like that. Now, obviously, tmux is already installed, but I'll press enter. In fact, it's telling me that right here, tmux is already the newest version and it's going to install some new packages. I chose htop and git. htop is a great package. I highly recommend that one. I'll press enter to accept the default of yes. And that was pretty fast. So now I could actually type htop and there it is. htop is an awesome utility to keep an eye on your system resources. And as you can see here, it's giving me a process table. It's telling me what my load average is right here, how busy my CPU is, which honestly isn't really all that busy, is it? And also how much memory I'm using as well. And then down here, it's telling me how much swap I'm using. We always want that to be fairly low, and it is. But anyway, you get the point. Now we could press F10 as it shows right here to quit out. That doesn't always work if the terminal application you are using maps the F10 key on your keyboard to something else but it does support the mouse, so I can simply click on the word quit, and then it's gone. So you just saw some examples of how to install some applications, but how do you remove one? Let's take a look at that. So maybe I've decided that I don't want htop on my system for whatever reason. So I can run sudo apt and then remove, and then htop, just like that, I'll press enter. And then it's giving me a confirmation message. It's telling me that if I continue, the htop package will be removed. And if I'm okay with that, I could choose the default by pressing enter, which in this case is yes. And then now, htop is no longer available, as expected, because, well, I removed it. Now, the apt install commands are very useful for installing packages, but what if I don't know the name of the application or package I want to install? So for example, I could run apt and then search and then a keyword. So maybe I want to install Vim, but I don't remember the actual package name for it. I could just include Vim here as a keyword and press enter. And this might not have been the best example because there's quite a few variations, but if I go up here, my preferred version is this one, Vim Knox. And as you see here, it's basically Vim with support for scripting languages, which is why I like it. So now I know what the package name is. So I can simply copy that, clear my screen, and then install it. I'll accept the defaults. And now we have them. Now, another thing that we can do with the apt series of commands is install updates. Now, before you install updates, you really should update your package index. Again, that's sudo apt update. But I've already run that a few minutes ago, so I don't need to run that again. 
So to install updates, I can run sudo apt upgrade, just like that. I'll press enter. Now here it's telling me that it's going to update all of these packages if I continue. In total, I'm going to have 11 packages upgraded. And if I continue, that's exactly what's going to happen. However, I'm going to choose no in this case and show you a different command. And here's the command that we've just run. I'm going to change this to dist hyphen upgrade and press enter. And it's also going to upgrade 11 packages. So what's the deal with apt upgrade and apt dist upgrade? What's the difference? Well, in my case right now, there's actually not a difference. In either case, it's going to install 11 updates on my system. So regardless of which of the two commands I go along with, the result is going to be the same. But the difference is with the apt upgrade command, it's not going to install any updates that require the installation of additional packages or the removal of packages either. Dist upgrade will install all of the updates regardless. But in this situation, this particular instance doesn't have any updates that are specific for one or the other. So the general rule of thumb is to first run apt upgrade and install those updates. So once that's done, you can then run sudo apt dist upgrade, and that will install any remaining updates, if there are any. In my case, there's not. So again, if there were any packages that did require the installation of additional packages, or required the removal of a package that's already installed, then that would fall into dist upgrade. Otherwise, apt upgrade is good enough. So how exactly does Debian or Ubuntu or whatever the distribution happens to be know where to get its updates from? Well, the easy explanation is that when you install Debian, Ubuntu, or whatever your distribution of choice is that uses apt, it's going to automatically set up a list of sources that it's going to pull the updates from. So let's go ahead and open up that file then so we could take a look at it. So I'm going to run sudo and then nano slash etsy slash apt. And the file that I want to edit is sources.list. I'll press enter. And here's the file. Now you want to be very, very careful when it comes to updating this file. If you make a mistake, then you will not be able to install any packages at all. Now one common use case here that you might want to edit this file for is to increase the number of packages that are available to include non-free packages as well, which are actually hidden by default. So if I go down here to this main line, and then I go all the way to the end, I could add non-free to the end of the line, and that's going to add packages from the non-free repository as well. So the way that this actually works is we have this repository line here. Yours might show something completely different, but this is the URL that it's going to be pulling the packages from. And then here we have the name or code name of the distribution version that we're running. I'm running Debian Buster currently. And then main is the default. That's your main list of packages. You definitely want to have that. Non-free is something that you can add. Think of it like a category of packages, and non-free refers to packages that don't have the source code available, which can be considered a license issue or might be a concern to some people. But if you have any requirements for applications or drivers that are not part of main, you might have to add non-free. And you can add entirely new repository URLs to this file as well. If you are downloading a very specific application, for example, Google Chrome, then you might be instructed to add a very specific repository to this file, or you might actually create another sources file that those particular packages can be pulled from. A full walkthrough of Debian repositories is beyond the scope of this particular video, but I am going to add non-free just so you can see how the process works. So I will hold Control and press O to save the file, and then Control X to exit out. So anytime you make changes to the sources.list file, then you should run apt update to refresh the index to include packages from the repository that you've just added or the category that you've just added. So I'll press enter. And if you make any mistakes, you'll see an error. I didn't, so we should be good to go.
So those are all the basics of the apt suite of commands for Debian, Ubuntu, and related distributions. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as you can see, the apt series of commands are very easy to learn and very powerful. You should now know how to manage all of the packages on your system, how to install them, remove them, as well as update them. So definitely subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. I have some awesome content coming every week. And make sure you click that like button if you like this video because that lets YouTube know that you want to see more content just like this. Thanks for watching.